We've all heard the tale of the young star, the phenom, someone so unquestionably gifted that they were destined for greatness from birth. But what about the journeymen, the grinders, the people who live and breathe on airplanes, switch teams yearly, are overlooked, tossed aside, written off? Their has-beens, constantly on the brink of watching everything they've ever worked for slip through their fingers. But somehow, they persevere. They never let go, no matter the cost, because they have a dream. You have a coach that became a player. Probably best coach all time, five time major winner with OG and he comes back and does this as a player. This is the story of one of those grinders, of a guy who saw his career come and go, only to reanimate it and become immortal. This is the story of... Can he do it here? He's at half outside! Take it to goal! His lifetime! Sébastien Seb Debs started his professional Dota 2 career way back in 2011, just as the first ever international had vaulted the game into the limelight. But back then, he wasn't known as Seb. He was fucking mad. And here with me, a fucking mad from Team Alliance. And I'm here with fucking mad. Actually, sitting here with fucking mad. He originally signed on with a roster called Team Shakira that year. They finished fourth place at DreamHack Winner, which led the Western Wolves to pick up the roster. But roster shuffles were common in that era of Dota, and Seb was no stranger to them. Even early on in his career, Seb was known as an analytical player. He had a commanding voice and wasn't afraid to use it to get his opinions across. He was confident, the kind of guy who would tell you how he felt no matter what. Yeah, it was, it was the beginning of esports, man. It, it wasn't easy. Like, it wasn't what it is today, unfortunately. If you, if you lose, you'd have no money to pay for your rent. You'd have, like, like I remember playing DreamHacks and we had no money to pay for the hotel. We were sleeping on the floor the very night. So you think twice about losing again, you know, like you, you, it was a do or die. It was truly the win or die kind of thing. He joined a team called Mortal Teamwork in 2012, ahead of TI2 and qualified for the main event alongside his new squad. They need something. Fonzie is being ripped. The throne is on 250 life. Finally, the kill is done. MTW take it. They will travel to Seattle for the international. Headed into TI2, many actually looked to MTW as contenders for the Aegis of Champions. But despite all the hype headed into the event, they tripped out of the gate, finishing with a record of 3 and 11. That first damage from MTW, Haggy to love, and here comes the rabbit! Morphling with a double, morphling with a triple, and it steals the GG. MTW are the first team to be eliminated from the International 2012. There's, there was pressure and the way we were treating each other as teammates I think was pretty immature back then. You know, I try to like uh, give every every year, like every DI like a reason or like a team for why we failed. That one was Team Dynamics. And that spelled the end of yet another stint on a team for Seb. This was kind of the story of his early career. He'd flip-flop between teams, never living up to his potential on the biggest stage. By the end of that era, he really was a bit of a nobody in the professional Dota world. Between 2011 and 2015, he played on 13 different professional teams. And after that disastrous performance at TI2, he was very much thrust out of the game's upper echelon. The community began to know him as just an arrogant kid with some talent that never really measured up to the rest of the game's best. I was like, it's been it's been a while now. It's already already been like five years or something of competing, and I felt like my ideas they were good enough to win these TIs even. And yet I'm sitting there, uh, not even making it to the main event ever. If I can't, like not even making it to the tournament. So I'm like, you want to be confident, you want to believe, you want to chase your dream, but you don't want to be delusional. He wasn't a phenom, he wasn't the game's next star, and things were only going to get worse. In 2015, Seb's career revved its engines a little when he signed with a former TI winner in Alliance. But the team had a mediocre showing in the lead up to TI5 and failed to qualify for the biggest event of the year. You know, it's almost heartbreaking. Why couldn't they have played as well in game one as they did in game one throughout the rest of the qualifiers? FGG well played. And with that, Alliance slips down. 
into last place along with Burden United. And they see their hopes for the International 2015 come crashing to an end. And despite some improved results from Alliance later in the year, Seb couldn't keep up. And after ESL won Frankfurt, he was without a home once more. It was hard to get that team anywhere until a certain, like at a certain point it felt like it felt like we were just banging ourselves against, like our heads against the wall. Only this time, he wasn't about to find a new one anytime soon. Despite the struggles he'd faced in his pro career, Seb was a student of the game. He was one of those guys that was just obsessed with Dota, whether he was winning or losing. He fixated on draft strats, pocket picks, micro and macro strategy, and in general, he always thought he knew best. So, when things went south with Alliance, he dipped his toes into analysis and casting, where he became a bigger community figure than he ever was as a player. But have you ever like thought about settling down as a cast or analyst? I think like in the near future, there's actually room for that. Dude, I, I actually enjoy it a lot. I, I think it's lots of fun and I'm really interested in the strategies, so it, 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 fits, it fits, that's for sure. But above everything else, I'm a competitor. I, I want to play that game to the highest level, try to win games. Games. So no, I never crossed my mind for any second. I can do that while I'm on a break. If I have time, I, I'd be glad to do it. I enjoy it a lot, but it's playing before everything. Dota fans actually began to celebrate the high level of analysis he could bring to the desk. He boasted expertise that's hard to come by in such a deep and complicated game. So sad thoughts. I think Empire has to play the same way they did in game one. You do? The fact that they were aggressive brought them ahead. Like, they actually caught LHD off guard many times and they crushed them in many openings. But it's also what lost them the game, so they need to find the right balance. It's gonna be tough, but they can do it. It was during this era that his reputation as a prominent Dota 2 mind grew immensely. But his highly opinionated personality also got him into trouble. He famously faced rabid community backlash after calling Arteezy overrated. But even though his pro career was largely a failure, that was just the way Seb was. The kind of guy who said what he thought and meant it, no matter who he might offend. Yeah, indeed. Seb, what are, you, what are your final thoughts on that on that game for EG? I mean, I kind of expected EG to dominate complexity. And no offense to complexity, but I think EG is the strongest team. Uh, there's probably a lot to do with my temper, with how I am. I mean, I'm, 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 a, I'm a very, like, um, I'm a person, I like challenges. At that point in 2016, Seb was adrift. He was a smart guy, but his professional career had never really measured up to his game sense and the volume of his voice. But at the end of that year, Seb got a fresh start. OG brought him in as an analyst during their run at the Shanghai Major, and then immediately hired him as a head coach after the event. I felt very unsatisfied with my career path. I felt like I, I could do like much more, I could have done much more in Dota in general. I never really met my expectations of what I was capable of, but I never really gave up on my dreams of like really testing what I was capable of. Even back then, OG were known as the type of team to do things their own way. So despite Seb's waning prominence, the union made a weird kind of sense. He was a big brain who wasn't afraid to break the mold, and that was exactly what OG wanted. The way he spoke about the game, you could tell. It wasn't just passion, it was brains. And this is kind of what we saw. And to say that it was a match made in heaven would be an understatement. It was very clear that this was the best opportunity I've gotten to that day to prove myself, like once and for all. There was not going to be any doubts. So that was the perfect scenario, so I, I just went for it. The team was built around Fly and No Tail, two of the scene's closest and most beloved players. They rounded it out with Prodigal Miracle, Moon Meander, and Crit. And with Seb at the helm, the W's continued to roll in. Ozzy's on in. Oh, Moon so looks good. to jump. This could be the combo. Let it go with the Sunray too. Miracle just waiting for the Omni Slash. Now it comes through and jumping forward. They get the stun on the Dragonite. They bring him down as well almost. Yes, sir. They sure do. The bear about to drop will pop the BKB, but they beat down Fana. They go Scepter to point defensively. The bear will fall. The heroes next. OG are doing it. Liquid. They can withstand the punishment. OG are the Manila Major Champions. Second time, the first ever team to repeat. Not only did they take home the trophy in Manila, but the team credited a lot of their success to their new coach. A huge shout out to our coach Seth. This would have never happened without him. Sebastian, thank you so much for this. It was it was a dream come true. Like everything just you know the stars they aligned. Like 
all these experiences that I've had in the past, they made sense. They started being useful. And OG rode their victory in Manila to yet another win at ESL1 Frankfurt. The ends, Maker defends the old scepter, but it's the mid ranks. They're forcing the Maker, then they get the GG. Yes. OG, they've just gone from strength to strength, and they will take this grand final 3 0 against Navi in spectacular fashion. Headed into TI6, they were among the favorites to hoist the ages. But like everything in Seb's career, it wasn't going to be that simple. The team was absolutely massacred at TI, losing to heavy underdogs TNC in the lower bracket. Your whole life is about that tournament. When it ends, I don't think you quite accept it. Your brain just doesn't process the fact that it's over. But OG were an enigma. They bounced back from their failure at TI with another major title in Boston and picked up 2017's first major in Kiev. They were the winningest team in major history. They had unrivaled chemistry and some of the most talented players in the world. With each major title, each triumph, Seb's reputation as a coach grew. When the highest level of Dota is played, when every little detail is thought through, it's something that is beautiful in the sense that I've never found this in anything else in my life. Here yeah, Major, we found our strengths, and uh, Sebastian really brought us together as a team. He's like one of the players, and uh, he deserves the moment to celebrate with us. But when it came time for the international, the game's biggest stage, they just couldn't measure up. Look for more! Bloodstone charges piling in! No tails next! They keep on going! No buybacks on three! The end is nigh! GG! LGD slay the beast! They move on! That loss left an everlasting, undeniable tear in the fabric of OG Dota. The heart and soul of their organization, Fly and No Tail, wouldn't be queuing into games together in 2018. Fly took S4 and left OG after TI7. It was a huge shock. Like, we, we for sure didn't see it coming. Not much was said. I think max three sentences were spoken in that room. Then they left. We spent eight years together, and now it's over. OG were in shambles. In the end, OG's majors weren't enough. Dota simply isn't about majors. If you can't perform at TI, it's time to go back to the drawing board. And that's what they had to do in the lead up to the International Eight. So forming a team three months before TI and having a shot at winning TI, no, not happening. OG had lost their captain, they looked like a shell of their former selves, and the Dota world more or less wrote them off. Just months before TI, they still had two holes in their roster, and there were no top players that they could sign on a moment's notice. So they found a ringer. So as soon as we got a spot, uh, I definitely thought of Guy, but the majority was like, who the hell is Thompson? Seb brought in Thompson, a Finnish pub star with almost no competitive experience to play mid. Anna came back, this time to play position one, and No Tail had taken over the brunt of the leadership role in Fly's absence. OG were being patched together, but one piece was still missing. The real question is why not Sebastian as a player instead of a coach? Uh, what I wanted is the team to win. I wanted us to play at the highest level of Dota, whether it's me, playing or me coaching, whatever it is, this is what this is the number one part. This is what makes me happy. They were beaten, they were broken, but they were going to give it a shot. After all, when the TI lights turn on, anything can happen. With the odds stacked against them, OG rose to the challenge. They didn't start the event off too strong, but they proved during the groups that they could still hang. Uh, we just got to work and, and try to fix everything we could think of that had to be fixed and it ended up working. Anna has the hand of God living for the moment, the two person shackle, this could be a decent turnaround, but the illusions taking down Abed with the desolate damage, oh it's dirty and the tip to boot. OG Dota, 
I love it. At the same time, another tornado comes out, and that's enough to finish Mount. He's oh, dead Sep for two No! Sep gets the Murata as well, and that's it! GG is the call from Iceberg. Wind strike. They don't get their win against OG, and they will be forced into a tiebreaker. They played a different style of Dota under Seb that year. In many ways, their in-game performance was a direct reflection of having a coach in the booth. They weren't afraid to level the opposition. Try that weird pocket pick or cheese strat. They were a coach's team. And along with some heroic performances from everyone on the roster, that style landed them a spot in the upper bracket, where they promptly dispatched VGJ Storm 2-0. As they've waited out in this game. A lift up there with the Yule Scepter. Light strike array as well. Draining through the man. And ice pack to save, and he's gone! 100 seconds has to buy back and get back into this fight. The Witcher's Curse, they turn it, they find him! Is he gonna go down? The Enchantress taking a ton of damage. They have the second light to run. Leave his back for two minutes! Oh, gee, they're taking them down, and this might be GG! All of a sudden, this team filled with outcasts who'd been written off before the tournament even started, were within striking distance of a TI final. But standing in their way was a familiar face, Fly and Evil Geniuses. If they wanted to make the Cinderella story come true, if Seb wanted to seize the career he'd always dreamed of, they'd have to dispatch the person who'd been there when it all started. OG versus EG will round out day number three. I'm so excited at all of those matches. I particularly want to see the last one. Um, I think it's safe to say, or safe to say that EG are the favorites going into this. Can he keep this man alive though? He doesn't have the black ball back of the other hand with a big gust heading him back. Tornado, Thompson, he's in for the back of the beat. Jackie Glass coming down, Thompson with the save, gets both of them. Thompson in Boca doing it big time on the main stage. Fly can't catch the Icarus Divers, he's back up to the high ground. Curse from no toe comes out to the grid and Thompson deeping out of it. Oh, hang on. They'll take him into the snowball. They want to keep the try going. They get on top of the egg. They'll take down the egg. They'll find the egg. That pipe's clear. It's going to fall. Oh, oh, the egg is going to one. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. He's got a rapier, but it's almost certainly the goal for the pace. OG looking to close things off. They're on to the agent. They're beating it down at a pace that EG can't compare to. GG is called. IG win the series 2-1. to one. What? Against evil genius is knocking EG down to the lower bracket. OG will move one step closer to the Aegis. So here we have this gang of brothers. They'd overcome all the odds, conquered maybe their greatest nemesis, and found themselves in the upper bracket finals of TI, a single match away from the final. What was next? Well, now they had to make history. A Chinese team had always won TI during even numbered years, and OG were facing off against that region's juggernaut and the world's top ranked team, PSG LGD who looked poised to repeat the pattern. Sentry Ward gets planted, Anna's still out of range of it. Observer and Sentry, they'll see Notile jump in right on top of him. He doesn't have that reincarnation back up again, so Notile's down, but Anna, he turns off the damage. BKB with a black hand, Jerex is there to help him out. Sonus standing his ground, the cold embrace, Anna does no more damage anymore. It's all up to Zeb, he looks for his target, and they pop up. They pop two, they pop three. Aren't they forced up to wait? Johnson is down, but he ends up where the Echo Slam, oh, there is. dancing forward, there's your slam, there's the dunk, there's the play, Jirax, the saviour of OG. They've got the control, X Nova will go down, this is the game, LGD have nothing left, OG have done it! It goes the distance, it goes to three! OG, how many times have they reached the grand final, but only of a major, never of TI. Their roster was shattered into pieces. They pull it back. Somehow, OG were on their way to the finals of the International Eight. We're gonna play the TI Grand Finals. I'll be a player in the TI Grand Finals. That's just, that sounded unreal. I think they're just gonna be fearless. When it came time for the Grand Finals, they had a rematch on their hands. OG versus PSG LGD, the Grand Finals of TI8. We've been waiting for this moment all day, and now a best of five series between these two teams to determine who is the best at Dota 2 this year. 
Give me tree and game main stage, man. Topia's got his monkey, like, this treat everybody the same. This is what happens Ooh. when I rush. Yes, that's what happens when I rush. In more than one way, this match was all about Seb. Sure, No Tail was a top player with a lot to prove. Topson was surging onto the scene, and Ana had redefined position one throughout the tournament. But if OG were going to win TI, they'd need to outsmart LGD. They'd need to get in their heads. He's gonna try to jump. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Canceled it. I got it, I got it. I got double me. Nice! Oppa, oppa, boys! Oh, oh. Get fucking fucked. Zipping across towards Jarek. The all out from the CM, but the beach armor from Seb's coming down. They've got the chain stun onto X Nova. Anna's still alive for now. They get the double kill, the corn embrace. Keep it out alive. The winter's curse holding by the attacks off the chalice. The charge is so fly. He'll fall. Triple kill for Anna. OG took the first game. But after LGD fired back two games in a row, they found themselves with their backs against the wall. Uh, boys, first game from best of three. Back against the wall. We knew we were going to get tested. We are getting tested. Yes. This is a rough situation to be in, of course, but we're going to overcome it together. And then came game four, the biggest game in OG history, and notably the greatest game of Seb's life. You said you really like Invoker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, the, also, yeah, give the boy Invoker. Invoker. Yeah, I like yeah, yeah. this might, might be the ass game. Yes. Seb back. Yes. Shit. Yes, man. Okay. Seb, yes. Fuck Seb. You're gonna see, man. You're gonna see some shit, man. This is my game, boys. Much like games two and three, they found themselves behind. But this time, an overlooked French coach with a mind for the game was not willing to lay down and die. Get the rub, Chubby. Still pretty beefy, but is he beefy enough? I don't think so. The shards are out, trapping him in. The spin, though. The taunt. The sun strike. Sam gets it. Gets the dunk off. The snowball save wasn't in time. And Jarex, he's in with the tether. OG. Oh, Two more summers again with the doppelganger. Army on top of Thompson. Thompson being saved by Jarex. Jarex with the tether. Army turns it to Jarex. There's the call. Sam, he catches Army. Army dead for two minutes to hand. They've got some roots as well. Oh, gee. The IO, but they're fully low OGD. That's Sonus there for two minutes. They get Thompson, Thompson there for two minutes. Only Anna, Anna, can he do it here? He's at half out. Take it to go. He gets the goal of his lifetime. As three dead now on LGD. No buyback. This morning, the hands are down. They're going to be able to find the self challenge. Three dead on LGD. OG hitting the On the back of Seb and his timely axe pick, it was time for game five. And with that Seb call ringing in the back of the minds of millions around the world, OG did the impossible. This is the game of our lives, man. Enjoy. Game five, grand finals of TI. This is like, everything is gonna come together next game, everything. And it's gonna be beautiful. He ulted himself up the flame guard, ticking it for down like the sign of fish. The RP, Sim, he's got the control on top As OG, they fight three. They look towards Sonders, surrounding him in the pit. Sonders, he'll go down as well. Oh, the buyback from Anna, securing the fight here for OG. There's only X Nova left alive, but not for long. They chase him down, they get the team wide triple kill for Anna. Focus up, guys. Focus up. We're not giving them anything. We're fucking them. The game now. No Echo Slam or Global. The Ancient is exposed. As OG, the Nimble no. Sound, the shockwave from Seb gets themselves another. They're onto the Ancient. Oh, G. Oh, G. They've done, done it. They have they done it. it. and friendship I've done it here ladies and gentlemen your grand champions of TIA it's OG I'm not how to describe it it's like it felt like we couldn't lose for some reason it felt like it was impossible to lose it's like some games like I don't know we were like two sides behind like 20 I don't even know like how bad it looked it, nothing was going for us yet it felt like this game was fine like it was it was 
I don't know how to put it. it, it, it maybe we're just lunatics. I don't know. It, it felt like we were not going to lose, and we didn't. From a shattered team to TI champions in just months, perhaps the greatest story in the history of Dota. And at the heart of it all was Seb, a guy that caught everyone off guard, even his own team. We all knew he had the smarts, but in 2018, he played better than he ever had. He played like a TI champion. Wow. Sebastian had retired to become a coach, and he's like, well, you know what? I want to be back. I want to be a player after all these years. And here he is. They did it. They lived the Dota dream. They were legends. After TI-8, they underwent some unforeseen hiccups involving Seb during the year, when, despite his newly minted heroic status in the world of Dota, he reverted back to the sometimes toxic attitude he made a name for himself with. Bro, I win TI, you buff player. Means I talk, you listen. Understand? Thank you. Parts of the community were up in arms when Seb made hateful comments towards Russians in a public game, and there were cries for Valve to confront Seb about the issue. Even as a Dota legend, Seb was still the same old solo queue trash talker. Welcome to the International. 2018 was nothing short of amazing. The story almost writes itself. But that doesn't change the fact that this was largely a taped together team. And even with the added chemistry a win like that can bring, OG weren't the favorite heading into TI9. Far from it. But when they got back on that stage, that special feeling returned once again. They finished first in their group, playing the kind of Dota they'd become known for just a year earlier. It was time for this team to show everyone it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't just fate. They were the best. And that became clear all too quickly. Much like the year before, not even Fly could stand in their way. He run, that's easy protected by the BKB. He has to jump back in again. Crit, S4, they even get the Tornado onto Arteezy over in the tree line. Goodbye. The lights are going out for EG right now. Luckily, this is a winner's bracket. But OG, they will push forward to the winner's bracket final. Repeating the history of TIA 2 one EG. Neither could LGD. Went tier four down to break onto Jerex, immediately disruption going out. Ame, he's been disrupted. His illusions got to stay away from those. He's gonna go for top sphere. BKB activated. Soul Kedra on him. Press the attack though. Helping him out. First splitter. Oh, but they, they got the duel. They caught Ame. And he's dead for two minutes. The ball is coming in, but it's not good enough. Now the physical damage will overrun the throne and PSG LGD in a three versus five can no longer hold. OG in the upper bracket finals. Break down LGD. OG to the grand finals for the second year in a row. They will have the opportunity to defend their throne. If you come at the Kings, you best not miss. Sebastian, I mean, honestly, I dedicate this tournament to him. Oh, fuck, this is so crazy. You're making me cry, stop <laughs> it. Uh, no, but really, thank you, Sebastian. And of course, everyone else. Just feeling so fucking lucky, feeling so fucking good. OG were back in the grand finals of the International. Nobody had ever won back-to-back -back TIs. No single player had even won two. But as they stared down Team Liquid across the stage, that was about to change. For this defense, they'll try and change Never. the ball. Thompson, they're working for Ike, brings Miracle down. There's the Shackle turn around. They're looking for Jarrett. Jarrett's backing away. Thompson focusing Miracle. Miracle's still out of mana because of this defuse. Jarrett, Jarrett, he's in with the cover. The GA is out. We hold will fall though. The magic damage is there for Thompson. He's ready to try and look for more potentially. There's only the ones. They're going for the back line. Thompson, he's on top of Kuro. No one called out there. The toss back into the combo. Jarrett's oh has the control. God. They're all getting picked apart as my control falls. Miracle is surrounded, and they're all dead. able to get this as well. OG, they will hold. As and they're even taunting him. They toss him to the dragon. They have nothing to offer for. They're just giving, look at this, they're guiding Fountain and TI Finals. They want Karoki in the Fountain as well. They're going to get him. They're chasing Miracle as well. Oh my god, I can't believe this. I can't believe what we're seeing in this game for. OG, you thought you saw it all against you. You thought you saw it all against you. These last two 
last three games didn't even seem close. Liquid, they had something going for themselves, but then they hit the brick wall. OG is the, the, the best, best team in the world. They're, they're on a completely no different question, level. No question. They are so far ahead of anybody else that plays this game for a living. OG, the best team of all time, and with this, their second TI win, and not just the second TI win, but the second back-to-back. -back. They do it two years in a row. There is no question that we're witnessing the best team of all time. There are no words that can do what OG has accomplished over the past two years justice. They proved everybody wrong about what it meant to be champions in this game. And at the heart of it all was one grinder, a Dota fiend, Seb. A player who is never meant to be the greatest, never fated to be a household name, someone who never stopped working and never gave up on the dream. A symbol of the obsessed, of the incredible journey that is Dota. Where the thing you want more than anything, to be truly great, can slip right through your hands, only to reappear amidst chaos to change the game. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.